Hi guys, thanks for joining me on another audio discussion. This one is going to be a little bit more about floor standing speakers. So, uh, kind of a deep dive more than just your even general information. So if you're not looking for specifics, um, this might not be the one for you, but if you want to learn a little, kind of more of the uh, ins and outs or more specifics of floor standing speakers, keep listening. So. The floor standing speakers are those big boxy things, or often they're boxes. Sometimes they're shaped a little bit differently. Mine kind of looks like an iron, actually. Um, but anyway, mine has mine is the Polk Audio RTI is the series, and the A9 is the model. I also have the A5, but the A9 has three uh, six and a half inch woofers, uh, and woofers are. Um, well, let's let's talk about those. So a subwoofer, people have heard of those before. Uh, those are the things that can be really annoying if you have one in your car and you have it turned up all the way. But uh, what it's supposed to do is just reproduce the low frequencies. Uh, typically, those woofers are the largest. Not typically, they are. They are the largest woofers um, in the in any type of speaker design because in order to get um, lower frequency, you have to have a bigger driver, a bigger speaker, um, in order to push out that type of sound. So getting back to my floor standing speakers, the woofers are kind of one step up, if you will, in the audio spectrum where they're still playing low, but not ultra low frequencies, not like sub 20 hertz. Um, the human hearing spectrum goes from about 20 hertz to 20,000 kilohertz. Uh, subwoofers typically and quite often play under below the 20 hertz range, whereas a woofer, like in a floor standing speaker, usually isn't even gonna touch 30 hertz. So Subwoofers can really come in handy below that range, um, but a woofer anyway is going to play no lower than 30 hertz, um, and depending on the design, uh, they can be crossed over at a lot of different places. Um, a mid-woofer or a mid-range driver um, is one step up above a woofer, so there's subwoofer, there's woofer, there's mid-woofer or mid-range driver. That typically um, works a lot with vocals. Um, and you know just voices um nothing to um nothing low like a subwoofer would play no explosions typically in, in the vocal range is where the mid range comes in handy those are typically four and a half to five and a half inch uh diameter cones used in there and then at the top end of the spectrum there are tweeters so a tweeter, kind of like the name implies, and like you might think of a little bluebird tweeting really high, um, that's kind of where the name came from. They play the high end of the audio spectrum. So I don't really have any good examples of what that vo of what that would fall into, um, but it's it covers a lot of ground. I think it covers from like 1500 hertz all the way up to like 20,000 kilohertz. It takes up a lot of ground, but there typically isn't a lot of audio there. It's just there because there are sounds that fall into that group that need to be played and without a tweeter you wouldn't hear it so um the different types of drivers there's paper cone drivers there's kevlar drivers there's copper ceramic drivers and clip speakers there's all different kinds uh generally they all do pretty much the same thing um they're just different materials that people work with um, to make their signature sound or to make it sound cool. Um, the one uh, s pretty big difference I would say is in tweeters a lot. Most of them are soft dome. They're the ones that you can kind of push in and ruin if you push them too many times. That's pretty, that's kind of the standard um, tweeter design. There are, I don't know how long, long these have been around, but there are things called folded motion tweeters, folded motion ribbon tweeters. Uh, they're just a flat, they don't have a dome, they're just kind of a flat. Uh, panel. Uh, it usually looks gold, and they're usually um, people generally characterize them as having very detailed and crisp, airy highs, like a very just a very clear tone. Um, and not that a, a soft dome tweeter like a standard one doesn't, but it's just kind of another another step up in their performance world. So typically, those uh, folded ribbon tweeters are more expensive, and they're only found in more spendy floor standing speakers. They're not going to be in your standard you know, $300 floor standing speakers for a pair. They're, they're gonna be reserved for a higher quality speaker. Um, so yeah, and uh, there are different designs of speakers, not only physically like what the cabinet is built out of or what it's made of, but also 
Um, there's different designs of how the speaker can actually work. So as an example, uh, I used to own Klipsch RF7-2s, which are big floor standing speakers. Uh, it had a one and three quarters inch tweeter, and then it had two 10 inch um, woofers that kind of, that were cr there was only one crossover. And what a crossover is, is the point at which the speaker decides, okay, this sound no longer goes to the tweeter, this is gonna go to the woofer or vice versa. If it's a sound that's like, okay, this no longer needs to go be sent to the woofer, this needs to be sent to the tweeter, that's the crossover point. So depending on if there's only woofers and a tweeter, there's only gonna be one crossover point. If it's a three-way speaker, there's gonna be two crossover points, one between the tweeter and the mid-range, and then another between the mid-range and the woofer. So the more time a company spends on getting that crossover right, the better the whole sound stage is going to work because um, the sounds are going to be sent to the correct driver for reproduction. Um, and if it's sent to the wrong one, there can be some pretty serious uh, downsides to that. So um, that just it just goes to show that uh, the companies that do it well, you know, they spend hours and hours and hours, probably thousands of them and multiple people uh, recording and working on all this because it's important to get those crossovers right. So. Um, Taking a little different step here, the um, in terms of sound, uh, from the top to the bottom, so the, the highest frequency sounds are the most directional. So if you, so for example, if the tweeter in your floor standing speaker um, is not facing towards you, the, it's not, the, the dispersion or the way that the sound is sent is more almost in a direct line as opposed to a, uh, like a V or a, kind of a cone shape compared to the total opposite, which is a bass wavelength, which is just kind of, is a huge, <laughs> it's a huge wavelength. It's like 40 feet for one single wavelength to complete itself. And it, it, it is a lot less directional. Um, so that's why wireless subs are pretty common because it typically doesn't matter where you put them. Um, if you're not picky, you can really put it anywhere. If you're trying to get really good performance, there's often people say you should get two and there are certain places where you should put them to get best performance. But if you're not picky, um, that's why wireless subs are common because it doesn't matter where they go. But compared to a tweeter, uh, you'd need that to be pretty directionally pointed where you are, otherwise it's not gonna sound, uh, you're gonna miss a lot of that sound stage. So, um, I kind of touched on the topic, but just as a general rule of thumb, the, the smaller it is, the higher it plays, and the bigger it is, the lower it plays. <laughs> so there's all the, I think there's, you know, there are huge subs out there. I owned um, two 16 inch subs. Currently I have two 10 inch subs. Um, I plan on getting a couple 13 and a half in a couple years when I have more of a proper theater setup. But um, the, typically the bigger the driver, the, the lower it plays and the louder it can go if the amp is, is up to the task. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, there, isn't, there isn't really a, a gold standard um, necessarily. There's lots of really good speaker companies and speaker design really hasn't changed all that much in the last 15 years. There's lots of little improvements, but it's nothing dramatic like when OLED TVs came out, that was a huge change. Um, a lot of performance differences there. But speaker design is, has been pretty stable and pretty similar. So, you know, if you're looking at a speaker that's like eight years old, that's not necessarily a reason to turn away. That could be an excellent speaker. And it's probably a heck of a lot cheaper than the newer versions that have come out that only have minor differences. So there's some good news. <laughs> if you're looking to buy some floor standing speakers, you don't have to buy something brand new. Um, it's pretty hard to ruin them if they're, you know, used okay. You, you can ruin them if you don't give them enough amplifier power uh, or they're just, you know, physically broken or thrown around, but generally they're, they work for a long time. So it's, it's a good investment and um, you can get pretty reasonably priced ones that, that sound excellent. So all the way from the, you know, $200 ones you'd find at Best Buy in the little Klipsch demo booth all the way up to, you know, your uh, electrostatic speakers from Martin Logan or, you know, what, whatever you're looking at. So um, whatever you need, there's there's probably something out there for you. So now that's what I got for floor standing speakers. I will catch you guys in the next one.